There we go, folks. Hello, I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. Again, I have to make this quick. I have to get back to work tomorrow morning. It's always good to get some sleep. And I'll tell you what, I am thoroughly refreshed from watching Money in the Bank. A fun two and a half hour pay per view. I didn't pay for it, so I don't care about, about the pay for play aspect of it. Again, I think it was only $19.99, so that sounds about right for about two and a half hours. Then you always get the first hour free anyway. So that's pretty good, though. So I've already left my thoughts on Money in the Bank. I was, for the most part, entertained by it. I wonder what's going to happen on Raw. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Of course, everyone heard the news. I think I mentioned it last night. Alberto Del Rio is in lockup. Yep. He said, Senor, please take these cuffs off me, Senor. Said, no, no mas. So, we'll see what happens with him. I think this is another relationship thing. Listen. Hey, Paige. I'm a single. I'll, let, I'll make you forget all about Alberto Del Rio. But more seriously, though, shame on you, Elbro Del Rio. You figure, like, once, uh, uh, something stupid. Twice, not so much. I think there was, I think this is, like, the third time, too. I think there was someone, a woman between this incident and Paige. That's pushing stuff. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about how... El, Vag El Vagabundo Hobo Dos fared. I'm impressed. For his picks, as he wrote them down, and some other scribble stuff, he was actually a 50-50 booker. That's pretty... That's impressive. And then cover roll. Holy shit. I don't want to spoil what, what what you said, but I'll I'll get into that very shortly. Again, if you were like your own thank you video, can you either find me on the Discord over at YouTube, send me a comment, shoot me an email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail .com, or be a public subscriber. With all that being said, let's get into Monday Night Raw. And wow, this Raw start off. The way Brian known expected. Becky Lynch is going to be a mommy. Wow. Either that or they're doing some really messed up angle. Where she's going away to do TV for a while. I think it's going to be a little... I think there's a little truth to both. One, in the early stages of pregnancy, you won't be able to tell. So she could do her movies... And she won't be able to wrestle, but she'll still be able to earn money. So I think there's, I think there's a weird little bit of both happening there. And because of that, first you can't, you can't wrestle while you're pregnant. Yeah, that, that's that's not happening anymore, folks. But Asuka, not only did she win the money in the bank, but that was actually her title match. Wow. So Asuka's new champion. Asuka was so excited. She danced. She 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 kicks. She wanted to kick Byron Saxon out. She danced on the table. She was crazy. Then she gave Becky Lynch a big hug, saying, "Oh, congratulations, Becky, Becky, Becky." I'm just sad because a whole bunch of guys are like, "Darn." Although, by someone's certain reaction, you would never know. And the thing is, 
And I thought of this. And it, it took me a good hour to, for it to set in, I think. By the time they did the 10th replay of this, I'm like, wait a second. Becky and Seth are engaged. But I don't remember them getting married. Unless they just elopes, which they probably could. And it's super quiet. Or... Uh, I'm just saying, Becky's mom might not be too happy. Because Catholics, before, before shenanigans, before you start to hear stuff like that, they, they want, like, something on this finger. Which is one of the reasons why I've never gotten married. Probably because, one, I'm not financially set up like Seth Rollins or Becky Lynch. Or I forget what Seth Rollins' real name is, but I know Rebecca Quinn's probably set up for a good long while. So she's financially capable of taking care of kids. I'm Hobo Tom. I'm happy when I get when I find eleven cents on the ground. So again, that's a whole other issue there. So so that's that. So it starts off with the match, and it's so good to hear. Joe on commentary. Joe, Joe, Joe. Da -da -da. Joe, 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 Joe. Da -da -da. Joe, 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 Joe. Uh, so Bobby Lashley takes on Umberto Carrillo in a no DQ match, as I found out. Uh, for the most part, post -mart, uh, most part, Bobby Lashley is too strong. He begins to he starts off very technically and then just <laughs> slaps Umberto Carrillo. Umberto tried to be the El Tecnico too, and return the slap. No, no, no. Umberto it doesn't work that way. Yeah, that that slap, that just annoyed Bobby Lashley. You just you just poked the bear, as they would say. You took you had to take that stick to the beehive, didn't you? you had to poke, 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 poke. Did you just poke me? That's a funny new office. I'll have to record that one day. I'm going to have a lot more free time. Uh, so Umberto goes flying. This is actually when he gets his offense in, which is typical. Uh, Bobby Lashley brought the chair. I'm like, whoa, wait a second. Then the announcers reminded us that this is a no DQ match, so this time you can use chairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Rome. Got Tom Rome. And then, so of course, he, he got the chair. Umberto gave him the. Drop kick, put his chair up, and he gets his offense in by flying, but then he got caught once and just slammed into that steel ring post. Again, it's not the apron that's the hardest part of the ring. It's the post and the steps. Because at least on the ring post, yes, it's harder, but there's still padding there. There's no padding on those diamond-plated steel steps. Or the metal ring post. Even if they are just plasticky looking, they still they're still like a metal post housing that stuff or, or being the um uh, support column for it. And then uh, by like I'm gonna punish you. Yeah, that was good. Then he got slammed, then he got caught in a full Nelson. I haven't seen anyone submitted in a full Nelson. In a while, and Umberto Carrillo tapped. Wow. Last person I saw give up in a full Nelson. That's when it was, I guess, a master lock. That was Chris Masterson. That was years ago. Even before that, you're talking about Hercules. Back, oh, the real early WrestleManias. I think. I think it was WrestleMania 1, 2, or 3. Hercules was involved. And, yeah, he that's the last time I saw... I actually saw the full Nelson actually being used. It's impressive. So this was actually a pretty fun match. Uh, the fact that they just redid this match with a new stipulation, eh, I'm not too high on, but that's okay. This was actually a cheeseburger match. And there's a tease of Randall Orton being on the show. 
Indeed. Uh, Zelina Vegas with her stable. They're all yelling at Austin Theory. He's probably the one person that doesn't speak Spanish very well. I want to say Austin Theory is Filipino. I don't think they speak pure Spanish. I think the pending, and again, you guys can correct me. They do speak a variety of Spanish, but it's not like, it's definitely not España. It's not even like Mexican or Puerto Rican, but it's a little, it's, it's, it's even more removed than that. So again, they're just yelling at each other. And Angel Garza has a match taking on Akira Tozawa. I'll give props to Akira Tozawa. He's here working. You know what? I'm working to Akira Tozawa. It's always good to see someone working and getting paid for their work. Because Akira Tozawa just got beat up. And, oh, I don't know where those Mexicans learn to do their chops. The Puerto Ricans. Ooh, they look like they hurt them. And then eventually, uh, Tazal gets tied up in the tree of woe. Angel Garza beats him with the knees. Angel Garza just really dominated this whole match. I don't think Akira Tazawa, I mean, minus maybe like the opening shot, got off any offense whatsoever. Uh, then Angel Garza nailed the wing clipper. And Garza just stares down. Austin Theory says, yep, I did this. What, what are you going to do? This was just a squash match. Akira did that at least made it interesting. He knows how to toss himself around. He knows how to sell. It was a ham sandwich. And then you go and comes into the ring and says, Oh, boys, don't, don't stop your bickering because of me. So then he just claymores Austin Theory out of the ring. Then Angel Garza says, says I'm, I'm muy guapo. And then, but he gets claymored for, for his antics. And then it's down to Drew and Andrade. Then we have another one of these champion versus champion matches. If it wasn't Drew and Andrade... I wouldn't be that happy about it, but these two can put on great matches for, like, wherever. Drew McIntyre is definitely much stronger. He goes with the arm ringer, really starts to work over Andrade's arms. Kind of going back to the way Andrade would work over his arms. Um, Andrade tried for the most part. Uh, he, got, he got tossed. He got stuck in the ropes, got kicked, goes outside the ring. That's those Scottish, Scottish thunder chops. Oh, Sounds like it hurts too. Again, I do like the fact they called them thunder chops because it does sound like thunder hitting your chest. Like it's a lightning hit and you have a thunder whap. Then uh, Andrade begins to work over the left arm. He goes underneath the ring. He pulls through very creatively between the uh, struts of the apron. Right, then begins to work over that left arm. It's a hanging Juju Katami over the top rope, which is always great. It's a shoulder buster. Uh, but Drew, Drew is so strong. He just does that, like, overhead toss, belly to belly. That's amazing. Like the super German belly to belly. And there's a Scottish headbutt. They did the yay boos. He went for the... Um, Future Shock DDT. Didn't get that, though. Got reversed. Andrade tried to hit the hammerlock DDT. He reversed that. He did. Uh, Drew McIntyre did, did get the reverse Alabama slam. And Claymore. One, two, three. Claymore. And wow. You know what I realized about this match? Zelina Vega was pretty quiet. And she was, for a change, very conservatively dressed. Indeed. So this match was fun though. This was a this was a good match. I'm I was shocked. This is a good surf and surf match. Then Drew cuts a promo. I'm also backstage. Bobby Lashley uh, can, has a talk with MVP, and Lana shows up. And I swear, if you watch it, Lana screams, and I think like. Like, she popped a vein in her shoulder. So there was, like, a vein in her shoulder that, like, wasn't there before. And then she started to yell, and the, this vein showed up. 
Then she stopped yelling and the vein went away. I don't know. I don't even know if that's really anatomically possible or if that's just some freak thing that happened. Who knows? And then the next we had the moment of bliss with the Iconics. Oh, the Iconics were bad. How was not Peyton Royce or Billy Kane knocked up yet? They were gone for seven months. Oh, well. I just know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lucky I don't have a girlfriend right now because of a month and a half of being alone in the house with a pretty woman. Yeah. There's going to be a third person in the house soon. Ooh, baby. Some baby making going on. That's okay. So it's the Iconic Sun take on um, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is still so amazing. Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce gets stuck in the corner. She gets beat up a little bit. Uh, blind tag, though. By, by Billy Kay. And they catch Nikki Cross <laughs> off guard. And it was... <laughs> because Nikki Cross is so short, she can't get low-bridged by the top rope. So they have to low-bridge her via the middle rope. That's just kind of funny. And, oh, those, those, those spanky pants that that Nikki Cross wears. Oh, surprise! Uh, Nikki Cross likes it. Likes to hit her chest. Yeah, she likes to slap herself in her chest. Eventually, one day that fest is going to come off again, and we'll see. We'll see sports for Nikki Cross, which is best Nikki Cross, by the way. Nikki Cross is just totally amazing. How is she's not pregnant? I think that's all. Like the Discord was talking. Like, how how is this woman not pregnant? Like, who's going to be pregnant next? Might be Charlie. She might have the love child with Angel Garza. No, because Angel Garza, I think, is you know, like engaged to someone else. But hey, if this is the WWE, you never know. Uh, Nikki tries some roll ups a couple times. The Iconics. The thing about the Iconics is that they know how to do it. They know how to double team. They do uh, stereo kicks, stereo elbows, very well in sync with each other. Uh, they even do this. The old schoolyard schoolgirl takedown, where I think it was Billy Kay got on her hands and knees behind Alexa Bliss, and then Peyton Royce just shoved Alexa Bliss right over. Schoolyard takedown. That's always that's that's such a classic double team maneuver. So good to see. Then of course Alexa Bliss, she hits her summer her, her dual wielding summer somersault knees. Uh, Nikki Cross got middle bridged, and then the Iconics. The other good thing about the Iconics, because they're loud and they're known for their volume, it's, it fills up the empty arena, so it doesn't make the arena feel as empty as it is. Almost like there's a few people there, but they have the vocal cords forever. What those two are like in bed, I, I won't know. I, 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 I should I shouldn't go there. I should be better thinking than that. Maybe. Uh, but then they hit like the magic killer. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows must be rolling around saying, Why? Why not us? We used to do the magic killer perfectly. Maybe they gifted it to them. Who knows? On their way out, they're like, Ladies, if you're still here, you can use the magic killer anytime you want. Uh, this was a fun match because the Iconics won. It wasn't for the belt. But this will set up for backlash, maybe. Ooh, that would actually be a good backlash match. Uh, the Iconics versus Bliss and Cross. Overall, I'll tell you what, this was a good cheeseburger match. And then Charlie's in the back. Um, uh, Ray Mysterio lives. He didn't go all the way off. He just fell five feet to the next roof. Darn, they, they should have kept those two off. Or at least like kayfabe, like they, they were dead, or showed him in like the hospital in like a body cast. That's okay. Uh, he congratulates Otis again. Ray, Ray Lewis! Uh, he's getting a little trish, and he's doing the sign of the cross a lot more. He is getting up there in age, and he's like, I'm glad, I'm glad they put that crash pad there. And then, and then he, he congratulates Seth. Awkward! Because Seth didn't say anything. Seth just like, just he just looks annoyed and like out of it this entire show. Which I guess is part of his character. But even when 
Becky got congratulated literally, literally by everyone backstage, and that that was a kind of like fuzzy, warm, heart feel, heartfelt moment. That was pretty cool. But then Seth is like, "Uh oh, I'm a father now." But that's a who knows. He might be ecstatic too. <laughs> I don't know how many times Becky came on that woman's belt before she gave it. Before she gave it to <laughs> listen to Oscar, you better sanitize that belt. <laughs> oh, that's the last thing I'll last naughty thing I'll say. Uh, then we had R Truth and Ricochet and Cedric Alexander taking on Vink Thorn, MVP. Uh, Vink, he tried to do the split like R Truth. No, Mr. Vink, it's very hard to do. I remember when I was playing hockey as a goalie. I could do the splits. I think I took like a year off of like stretching and like playing hockey, and then I tried to do a split again. No, I only took like a year and a half for like my groin to tighten up. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done with the schooly stuff. It doesn't work anymore, folks. Age, father times undefeated. What can you say? Uh, yeah, I think realized that it's not that easy to do that split. Uh, by the time Vink gets back up. He gets to tag in thorns. Oh, those Aussies! Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oh, oh, they know how to chop too. Uh, again, uh, 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 T TV sixty ones doing pretty good. MVP as their elite as their coach. Uh, again, our truth eventually beats up MVP. That's, that's that was great to see. Uh, Ricochet he just does that leaping neck breaker. They go do a lot of wrestling on the outside. Uh, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander really take take out Vink and Thorne on the outside of the ring. Our Truth hits the lie detector. I mean, that a while on MVP. Our Truth, Ricochet, and Cedric Alexander pick up the win. Bobby Lashley comes down. Literally, well, I think MVP did it, but but Our Truth, he has his like false teeth. Terrible, terrible stuff. Cousin Ricky. Oh, God. Someone at WWE thinks that was funny. It was for about five minutes ten years ago, but it was kind of a throwback. Like I had, a, it, it made me chuckle. I'll admit it. I I chuckled and I'm like, this is stupid, but that's okay. Bobby Lashley comes out, just destroys our truth. But overall, it was an okay match. It was that ham sandwich? Then uh, Charlie's back, uh, interviewing Jinder Mahal. Jeez, never realized how short Charlie is to like Jinder Mahal. Because Jinder Mahal, I think, only he's, well, I say he's only a six four, but compared to Charlie, he looks like he's seven foot tall. Uh, let's see here. Then Shana, uh, Shana Baszler is there, and she, she shoots on, she shoots on everyone. It's like who'd want to get pregnant? And then Natalie comes out. Well, aren't you happy? It's like she shoots on mothers. She says, she's like, it's like, why aren't you pregnant, Natalie? Can't you get pregnant? Oh! It's like, it's like, doesn't, it's, oh, she almost was going to say, doesn't your husband love you enough? Oh! Yeah, why isn't Natty pregnant? I saw her, I think on the Total Divas thing, wearing like lingerie. Yeah. Sweetie, we're going to bed for a few hours. Get, get, get the Gatorade out. Then there's a little Undertaker thing. AJ's watching that. He throws popcorn at the TV. AJ's not happy. It's the Undertaker. He doesn't like the Undertaker. And let's see here. Saxon actually, actually called Seth an a-hole, I think. Oh, no. He called him a hobo. Byron Saxon. That's gimmick infringement. The only hobo here is the one, the only Hobo Tom. Seth Rollins isn't a hobo. Seth Rollins never had to go out there and, and, and earn a living. He's a pro wrestler. He goes out there and entertains people. He does flippy stuff. And he flips himself. And, makes bu and does bumps. And makes babies. Oh, wait. Yeah, I didn't mean that last part. but Yeah, he's never having to pick up aluminum cans off the street. Boo, Byron Saxon. You're going to be put on my Boo Forever list. There's only one other person on the Boo Forever list. And that's Boo Sonya Deville. Any chance I get, 
I will always boo Sonya Deville. I might be booing you next, Byron Saxon. You watch yourself. That's gimmick infringement. WWE is going to copyright violate me whenever I show an additional nine seconds of any 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 show. I should copyright Byron Saxon and say you boo Byron. There's only one hobo. That's hobo Tom. That's right. No hobo Seth. Boo boo boo. And then we had Rey Mysterio and Alistair Black taking on Seth and Murphy. Uh, Seth for the um Seth just stands there. He looks like out of it. He's like in a trance. He's he's just confused. He doesn't get this whole Messiah thing, and now he's a daddy. And Seth has a new theme. I heard it a little bit, and I'm like, that sounds weird. So I guess that's that is what it's gonna be. But yeah, again, I'm not really into that unless I do like. It's different when I think. You have the over the top cult leader, like the Bray Wyatt, the Waylon Mercy, um, James Mitchell, I guess to a degree, Raven. So you know they're over the top. Seth, Seth, it's a little too close to home. Again, I like my wrestling here, not necessarily here. When I, I look at the, at the two weird extremes, but when it gets to be that like, oh wait a second, I've actually no, oh, yeah, no, nah. Seth, boo, boo, Seth, he only gets booed a few times. He he's no Sonya Deville, but Byron Saxon, boo, Byron Saxon, hobo Tom, only. So Murphy, for the most part, he, it's his job to get beat up during this match. Uh, Black, he got kicked into the ring post. That was pretty cool. Murphy driven into the corner. Again, eats a big boot. He tries to call Seth. Help me. But Seth just has this like look. For the most part, he just like stands there for the whole time. Finally, Seth comes alive because because when Ray gets in, he got in his shot. And then he nailed Seth like Seth. All places like like a like a stomach shot. Stomach punch. That's the thing that's gonna set. Seth off? I mean, I see like an insecurity or, or a step up kick or, or or something like flippy stuff. A gut shot is what sets Seth off? Seth Rollins. Whatever. And then, then, then Seth comes alive and he just like goes right after the eye of Rey Mysterio. And the ref saw that's like, no, 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 we're done. There's too many referee stoppages. Uh, I could understand if, if they continued it a little bit and then stopped it because what Seth did was pretty vicious. He put Ray's eye right by the corner of the metal ring steps and then he kicked Ray in the head. Now, in theory, that could just puncture the eye. And he knew it was f either fake blood or he bladed or something because it was red. If you poke the eye, I've actually seen eye injuries. It's not bright crimson red. It's it's this weird, like a most like pinkish. It's, it's like pinkish, clearish white, milky stuff that comes out. It's it's not really. It's not really milky either. It's 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 not the blood red. But there's the vitreous in the eye, and it's, I mean, semi-transparent. It, it looks just, I guess, like cloudy water, I guess. And with the red blood vessels, so it's a little red, but it's more pink than that bright crimson red. So it's that weird, it's, so so I knew I'm like, oh, did he really get him? And I was like, oh, no, he, he's fine. He either bleed or... Or, or or they poured some fake blood on him. Or he had a blood capsule underneath his mask. I'm sure it's probably easy to do, considering I, I don't think he got touched at all. I don't think Ray got touched at all during this match, except for that one part. So, yeah, so the, then the rest is, oh, no. See, this is when the ref should have stopped the match. That's going too far. Just like a punch to the eye, uh, that happens. But, like, literally setting your opponent's eye up to be smashed into a sealed corner. That's over the top. Um, so, but Ray Mysterio and I guess Alistair Black won. 
Particule Dust the Fitness, baby. This is a dusty old ham sandwich. I don't like the Seth Rollins. Seth is no good, dirty, dirty man who gets people pregnant. Boo Seth Rollins. I think one person in Discord says Seth has ruined three careers. He's ruined the careers of, of Sting, Finn Balor, and Becky Lynch. That's just mean. Um, so yeah, that match with that ham sandwich. Then they're in the trainer's office, and Seth is like, oh, what did I do? I'm sorry. Then Alistair Black's like, F you, and starts to beat up. And I think Drew McIntyre almost dropped an F-bomb, too. He's getting really close. I think because they've let off a bunch of writers, they're doing things more bullet points-ish, saying, okay, bullet point one, talk about this match, bullet point two, talk about this, bullet point three, do this. They're saying... Our writers are not here. here. Here's your list of blood points. As long as you cover these, we're all good. So, yeah. So, they're getting more off the, off the cuff. So, that's pretty good. Then, Blake and Murphy just decide to fight in the trainer's office. Which is probably never good because there's always sharp things in trainer's offices for some reason. Like, doctor's office are probably, like, the least safe place to be. There's, like, needles, scalpels, scissors. Ugh. I don't know. But well, I did just get my insurance, so eventually one day, after I lose about 50 pounds, I'll go see a doctor. So the first thing he's going to say, he's going to say, you're fat! You're a fat son of a bitch! So, yeah, I know that already, sir. Oh, wow, the swash is still okay. Wait. Oh, it's... Wait. How do I get you to stop? Oh no! Wait, that's no wait that no wait that's the that's the, this is the right time. That's why, because I know that's also my timer at work for my lunch break. I thought it was still going. I thought I broke it, but no, it broke my foot instead. That was painful. That was so bitch. I'll tell you what: the most annoying injuries are foot injuries. For some reason, the foot bleeds if you puncture it, and just like poured out blood for literally, I think only thirty seconds. But that was enough. I'm like, what the hell is? I don't know. I had this much. Blood in blood in my foot. I stepped on a little metal thing. I foot blood out. I'm like, the hell? And it just hurts. It's just annoying. It's like when you step on like a thumbtack. It's like after you pull it out, like it hurts when you puncture it. When you pull it out, you're like, ugh. That kind of hurts. And then it just has that like dull throbbing pain for a while. It's, it's weird. So then we have the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits in a basketball game. Anything you can do, I can do better. Whatever. Um, Viking Raiders, they had more fouls than points. And then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, we let you win. Then Ivar starts like raining down threes. Whatever. And then there's an, another thing on Natty and Shayna. Who, who cares? Who cares about Natalia? I'll tell you what, Tyson, could you have to do a better job in the bedroom? We need Natalia off the air. I mean, she has to be off the air, too. But uh, Shayna Baszler taking on Natalia. This is, for the most part, a classic Matt wrestling match. And uh, Natty, like, she just, like, started to, like, slap Shayna Baszler. I would not do that if I were you, Nat Natalia. That's not that smart. You're just, like, upsetting her. You're just, like, making her angry. Uh, Shayna just suplexes the heck out of Natalia. Uh, Natalia did not... Get her wrist broken. She she was smart. She said, oh, wait, I can actually move my arm out of the way of this hole. It's not that hard. But then she just ate a running knee for it. Like, knocked her out. Shayna Baszler wins the match. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And then Natalia has, like, a hissy fit. It's like, Natalia, you're just coming too? It's like... Yeah, you, you lost. You don't remember getting knocked out? Oh, well. Whatever. Uh, and then Charlie interviews King Corman. King Corman's going to come on over. He's going to feud with Drew McIntyre for whatever reason. King Corbin. 
hey, you're not me. And then there was uh, Charlie then finally interviewed Edge, and then Orton came out. These two are going to have a classic wrestling match, maybe in Backlash. We'll see what happens for that. And that was Raw. An interesting Raw. Um, definitely piqued my interest at the beginning. Some good matches, and then fizzled out towards the end. I don't know. Three hours without an audience is getting kind of long, though. I know we still have about one, two, three, four. If WWE has your ways, about three more weeks. And I actually was talking about this with a coworker. The WWE could do NXT live shows. All the thing is, is that they they won't be the draws they used to. They'd have a limited number of tickets, and I mean it could work because I know here at the local gym, I think when I did the math, you could max capacity is like five hundred ish. You can literally cut that in half by just selling. I think it would be more than, I think it would be like down to the third capacity if you just sold, say, like 100 general admission tickets, which they don't do anyway. And then if they sold every other seat in the ringside area, that could possibly work because that's the ringside's a more controlled area. And it's not a super huge arena either, it's this little gym. So security could really say, okay, you need your ticket and you have to stay in your seat. So that's not necessarily bad. General admission, you're really spaced out. Unless, like, I think only because I would talk to Jen, we would still be four feet apart then. I mean, you're still, I mean, you can still be six feet away from people, even general admission. So, I mean, they could do it. The only the only thing, issue would be like family groups, but I'm not even dealing with family groups, whatever. And that was the show. We're going to like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. You'll see me tomorrow live stream to react to Impact Wrestling because they're a lot more lenient as far as what I can show on this. Uh, Wednesday is going to be my review of AEW. Thursday I'm off. Thursday is a good day. I get to relax that day. Friday will be SmackDown. I'm off Saturday, Sunday. It'll be and then Monday. Oh shoot! Wait, yeah, yeah. And then in a couple of weeks, the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League will be back. 